Welcome back to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I am joined by U Tampa women's lacrosse player Gracie Colombo. In her lacrosse career, Gracie was on the 2024 NCAA Championship All Tournament team, the 2024 IWLCA Second Team, the 2024 First Team All SSC, and was the Sunshine State Conference Offensive Player of the Week back in April. Most importantly, Gracie recently just helped their team to a national championship victory. I'm super excited to talk to her about it today. So welcome to the podcast, Gracie, and how is everything going? Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate um, your time and having me on. I'm a big um, listener of the pod, and I'm excited to be here. Um, yeah, it's definitely it's going great. It's been a great couple months since the national championship win. Um feeling very blessed and very excited and just grateful for everything that's transpired in the last couple of months. It's been amazing. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate that. And yeah, how has the past month been for you since you won the national championship? Have you, has it fully sunk in for yourself uh, since it's happened? And I guess <laughs> how, what's, have you tried to get any sort of like calmness, I guess, since then? Cause I assume there's a lot of uh, craziness that happens after you win that. Yeah. I mean, Ever since we won, I mean, as we all are aware, like no matter what, there's always only one team that's truly happy at the end of the season. And for me, since the my last game ever as a lacrosse player was the national championship game and having won that game, it almost feels like my lacrosse career like hasn't ended yet just because we've been celebrating it and having such an amazing time with my teammates. So, I mean, in years past, obviously we haven't never made it that far and ending the season on a loss always kind of feels very final and um, like set in stone and done. And so having this win at the highest level of my career has been absolutely amazing. And I don't think it's fully set in. I remember probably two weeks after it happened, I was just in my bedroom about to go to sleep. And I just started absolutely bawling, crying just because I hadn't fully set in until like two weeks after. But yeah, it's been absolutely surreal still really hasn't set in 100%, but definitely feeling very lucky and um, happy about the win. It's the best way to go out, final game to be a national championship game. Um, it couldn't have been better and a better ending for me. Yeah, not many players get to end off on a win, so it's pretty <laughs> cool that you got to do that. And what's been like the coolest thing your team has got the chance to do during your championship celebration? Anything fun? Um. So... Obviously, we were in Orlando for uh, the national championship game, and having won, we had a bunch of our family, friends, all come from Tampa. It's only like a two-hour drive with traffic, and so we were actually able to like rent out one of the conference rooms in the hotel, and we were just having a dance party and a celebration the entire night of that night. It was probably the best day in my entire life. It was so amazing, um, so that was pretty amazing, just that entire night um, having to celebrate with my friends and family. And then, weirdly enough, the following weekend after the national championship game, I was helping out at a golf tournament that my one of my past teammates, Abby Hope, was um, running. And it was pretty much filled with past professional football players for the Tampa Bay region. And so it, word had gotten out that me and a couple of my teammates were there working the, the tournament, the golf tournament. And from that point on, every single football player past Tampa Bay Bucks legends were coming up to us and congratulating us and letting us know how absolutely insane it was. So randomly enough, that was kind of a weird celebration moment because we had these amazing athletes coming up to us and thanking us for, um, you know, our, what we had just accomplished for the Tampa Bay region. So that was really cool because we had some really cool people come up to us. Steve Spurrier, who was a football coach at Florida was there and he was coming up to us and telling us how amazing that was. So that was very, uh, very interesting, not expected celebration moment for us, for sure. That's a lot of fun. Obviously, yeah. I'm a big uh, Patriots fan, but I don't assume Tom Brady probably was not there for the Tampa Bay region. No, I wish that would have been <laughs> that would have been too cool. That would have been yeah. way too cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I don't really know too many former Buccaneers. I mostly know most of the current ones, like Mike Evans, uh, Chris yeah. Godwin. Uh, so I guess. Uh, but uh, you said former players, so I guess they probably yeah. weren't there. Yeah, there were there were um, a couple older players like Jimmy Giles was there, and then a couple other like um, football legends in the Tampa Bay region. But it yeah. was it was definitely a really awesome experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, and you also recently just graduated as well to add to your craziness of what's been the past <laughs> couple of months. So 
do you still plan on being involved with lacrosse in the future? And uh, if so, what does that look like for yourself? And I guess what's what was your graduation like as well? Congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, graduation, it was probably the craziest, I'd say, like, month of my life. We had, we graduated um, one weekend, and then that immediately following weekend, we were gearing up to go to the tournament, the NCAA tournament. So we graduated, we were preparing for the tournament, we were also, you know, dealing with all the things of families like coming into town and having dinners and all this, while also managing practices and then getting ready for this, these biggest games of our lives, so it was definitely an insane time period, um, but I definitely do want to stay involved, especially in the Tampa region with lacrosse. Um, right now, I'm kind of taking a step back and just kind of taking a break from lacrosse a little bit, but I definitely want to be able to coach some coach locally, maybe a high school team in the future, but definitely still want to have stick in my hand at all times. I mean, it's definitely my favorite thing to do whenever I'm bored, wall ball, stick work, anything like that. But I definitely plan on trying to stay involved, maybe coaching a little bit here and there. But I've really enjoyed taking a little break these, this month, taking a step back from all the craziness of lacrosse and just kind of soaking it all in. But I think in a month or so, I'm going to be like itching to get back and itching to get back mm -hmm. in the game and pee a little, try and find like a league where I can play a little bit. But definitely right now, enjoying some time away. And then I think in a month or two, it's going to set in and I'm going to have that itch again of trying to play. <laughs> Maybe some media, some talking about the sport as well. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I love, pot. like, all my friends know that I really love podcasts. And so I listen to a podcast probably every single day on a car ride or whatever it may be, um, more so than music. I, I listen to podcasts more than music. So I love talking to people and I love, like, listening to what people's thoughts are. And so podcasts are definitely, I would love to maybe start a podcast or be on more podcasts because it's definitely something that I love to listen to. So. Well, let's transition now and talk about the beginning of your career and sort of work all the way up to the national championship win. So you're from North Carolina. So talk about growing up there and how did you start playing lacrosse? Yeah, so I moved to North Carolina in middle school and I had played, you know, rec leagues up until then, but really started getting into lacrosse when I moved there um, in six, six going into seventh grade. Um, and obviously, it, it wasn't at the time a very big hotbed for lacrosse. It's definitely grown a lot since my middle school years. But uh, originally getting there, it was definitely not as big as it is now. And so coming from, um, I was originally from Massachusetts, and then coming there to North Carolina, it was definitely a little bit of adapting and uh, changing experience because coming from Massachusetts, North Carolina, everyone up in the Northeast plays lacrosse and has a stick in their hand since they're you know, three years old, and then coming to North Carolina, where it hasn't been so popular, but it's still kind of picking up and people are still kind of getting into it. It was definitely interesting to adapt to that and kind of adapt to a new team environment and find girls that were interested in playing with me and wanted to buy into what lacrosse was. Um, so yeah, I, I played lacrosse um, in middle school at a public middle school. Um, and then I transferred my um, going into high school to a private school called Charlotte Latin. That was definitely the best, one of the best decisions of my life. Um, and it was, it changed my entire life completely. I met my um, high school coach who has since been a major mentor in my life and coach in my life. One of the, her name's Nikki Williams. She's like a second mom to me. Um, met her there. She coached me for all four years at Charlotte Latin school and was also my club coach. So She's been a major part of my success and just my life in lacrosse. Um, but yeah, definitely, it was definitely a transition from coming to the Northeast to North Carolina and then finding kind of the right fit for me, both um, academically and athletically in middle and high school. So, And growing up, did you have like a favorite player or team that you like to watch? I assume you probably watch North Carolina. Yeah, UNC all the way. Uh, Marie McCool was always a legend. Uh, Sammy Joe Tracy. Uh, the list goes on and on. I was always just trying to watch as much lacrosse as I could. And especially growing up, they always just tell you to watch it no matter what and try and learn as much as you can. And so, yeah, definitely UNC was huge. Um, I My family was all into all different types of sports. And so I was always watching lacrosse, football. My dad played football at Villanova, so I was big into football um field hockey I played field hockey in high school as well so we were watching all different types of sports and trying to pick up whatever could stick 
Now, like you mentioned before college, you played for Charlotte Latin School. So just talk a little bit about your lacrosse experience there, what you took away from it, and what's like the best memory you have from your Charlotte Latin School days? Yeah, uh, I first of all, I love Charlotte Latin School with my entire heart. It's probably my favorite place to be in Charlotte. Such an amazing community there, such amazing coaches, people. But um, starting out my freshman year, we had made it to the uh, state championship and got absolutely clobbered. We lost by a million points, and but it was definitely a great learning experience. Fun to get out there, see what a state championship was like, and just kind of get the, the vibe of what it would be like. And then my sophomore year, we made it again to the state championship. where We were down by eight points at one point, came back to lose by one point my sophomore year. And then my junior year, we made it all the way to the state championship and we won by, I think, at least seven or eight points. So, um, And then my senior year, obviously, was 2020. So COVID had to unfortunately happened. So I didn't really get my senior year of athletics there. But my last season of lacrosse at Charlotte Latin was winning a state championship. And it was such an amazing experience. That was definitely my favorite and most fond memory while there, um, winning a state championship with my friends. Um, my one of my favorite coaches in the world, Mickey Williams. And um, yeah, it was definitely my favorite experience there. So many great memories, but um, definitely very fortunate to have such an amazing community and coach and um, friends there at Charlotte Latin. That's pretty unique that it sort of paralleled your college career in a sense <laughs> where you guys started off uh, like sort of struggling at times and then ending up winning a national championship at the very end. A hundred percent. Yeah. In, um, yeah, my sophomore year, we were we were joke we would joke around because we had such a tough schedule that we were just trying to break 500. We were just trying to get into the winning column and have a have more wins and losses. And that was the year that we got um, we played Queens in the uh, first round of the NCAA tournament. So yeah, it was it's very similar how both uh, my high school and college career parallels. Um, but yeah, I think it was definitely good to have that starting in high school where you know, success doesn't happen overnight. It's not your first season that you're going to be winning all these games and getting to these exciting games. It takes time and it takes time for the program to build with you and kind of evolve into that championship program. But yeah, it was very, um, very similar, actually. I hadn't necessarily thought about that, how similar those two kind of experiences were. But now that you bring it up, it is very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Now, you also played club lacrosse for AC Lacrosse with Nikki Williams as well. So I guess how did your high school experience with Charlton Latin and your experience with AC Lacrosse sort of help prepare you for college lacrosse with Tampa? Yeah. So um, as I said, uh, Coach Williams was my high school coach and my club coach. And so it was pretty amazing having, you know, my coach at all times with me in the summer during tournaments and then also during the school year. And it really helped me be able to learn and build as an athlete. I mean, having her around and having her coach me through everything was uh, crucial into learning how to become a, a collegiate lacrosse player. And she definitely prepared me super well for what life was like in, um, in college athletics. It was definitely not easy, but she definitely prepared me very well. Um, but yeah, I have such great memories of AC lacrosse. Um, AC stands for Atlanta, Charlotte. And so there was a, gr a group of girls in Atlanta and a group of girls in Charlotte. And so we were able to kind of bounce around between teams and go to all different types of tournaments in the South and the North, all over the country. Um, and it was really amazing to be able to play with a bunch of different girls from a bunch of different areas, um, learn as much as I could and get as much out of these tournaments and practices that I could. But it was definitely one of the best um, times, those summer tournaments, as I'm sure. Most of the girls in the podcast have shared those tournaments in the summer. I miss them so much. And especially now with, you know, the recruits coming in for um, at, that are graduating from high school, I see them all at their like high school tournaments in the summer. And I definitely miss those times, but definitely some really amazing memories um, from AC lacrosse. And I love that club. Now talk about your recruiting process with you, Tampa. What was that like for yourself and what made you want to go there for so the schools you might've looked at? Yeah, so Tampa was always um, one of my top schools. I have an older sister, Cece Colombo, who she's a year older than me. And she also was on the team when I was in high school. So she 
um, started her freshman year. She's a year older than me. And so when I was a senior in high school, she was starting at Tampa. And so she was just telling me all these amazing things about how awesome Tampa was. And I knew that I definitely wanted to see if I could play there and see if I could potentially get into the school. So that was definitely my number one choice. I mean, obviously the weather, the location, the beach, um, and then also just the family atmosphere that we have at Tampa is absolutely unmatched. I think I've made, you know, so many amazing lifelong friends from this program and learned so much. Um, and lacrosse alone, just the friendships that I've made and the atmosphere, the family, the coaches there that have made my time at Tampa so amazing is kind of what I knew what happened, but definitely experienced firsthand. Um, so that's definitely why I wanted to come to Tampa originally, just because my sister had told me such amazing things, the location, the education, everything all together just pointed in the direction of Tampa. And I was lucky enough and then had the an opportunity to play for Coach Gallagher. And I am endlessly grateful for her for giving me that opportunity because it was definitely the best decision of my life to be able to play with my sisters and at the University of Tampa. That's awesome. Yeah, getting the chance to play with your sibling in college is very rare just because it's hard to make it to the D2 level, but then to play with your sister as well, just because sometimes scholarships don't align and all that. So that was really, well, did, well, as a freshman, did she sort of boss you around at all or was <laughs> she just sort of let you sort of adjust to the college lifestyle on your own a little bit? Yeah, so we are extremely close, obviously, because we're a year apart in age. So it's almost a friendship and obviously being my sister. So she kind of let me figure it out for myself. She would give me very important tips and pointers, but she definitely let me figure it out for myself and kind of let me make those mistakes and learn from them. Um, we are very, very close. And so having her by my side to help me through my entire career was extremely um, helpful and invaluable. And, um, but yeah, on the field, we're pretty, um, every once in a while, we'll get, we'll get into it, but on the field, we're pretty much teammates first. And then off the field, we'll have a chat about whatever happened. If something was, something was wrong or we thought someone should have done something or someone should have caught and passed this point. But on the field, I think we were pretty professional and we had That's a really good. good relationship on the field. Yeah. Um, especially because I've played attack my entire career and she played midfield. So it was kind of nice to have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a buffer between positions and um, working together, you know, helps a lot because I know exactly how she plays and she knows exactly how I play. So it was very exciting to have her on the field with me, but also um, we do have a really great relationship on and off the field. So it definitely helps um, all around. What was like the biggest adjustment you had to make to college lacrosse? Yeah, so I always had really amazing stick work and hands, but my footwork and my conditioning was at times lacking. And so I think coming from a high school program and being, um, you know, having a really crucial, pivotal role in the program and then coming to college where you're not going to be the best player on the team and you're not going to have all these minutes right out of the gate. Um, that was definitely a, a transition for me, trying to get my conditioning up to speed and also getting my footwork where it needed to be. Um, so yeah, just definitely learning that it takes time and it's not going to happen overnight, especially in a conference that's as dominant as the Sunshine State Conference, where everyone in the conference is really amazing and has such great players. Um, it definitely takes time to adjust to the level of play that we have in Division Two in the SSC. Yeah, talk a little bit about what it's like playing in the SSC and just the competition you face each game, because Obviously, it's a great conference, but I don't think it gets talked about enough compared to other conferences in the Division II level. Yeah, I mean, our conference is absolutely amazing. Every school in the conference has such amazing recruits every year. And I think a lot of times it goes unnoticed that we get some really amazing top Division I transfers. Like this year, we had an amazing transfers from Long Island University, Louisville, um, from everywhere, from in University of Indianapolis. So we had really amazing girls coming from different schools and then some really amazing top recruits coming out of high school. So no matter what it is every year, there's always gonna be amazing competition from every team. And there's really no you know bad school to go to. I mean, any school you could go to in the uh, Sunshine State Conference has an opportunity to make it to the Division II tournament. And I think especially this year, we've, we saw that having played 
some really close games in the tournaments, in the conference tournament, and then in the um, NCAA tournament. So it was, yeah, every team in the conference has amazing girls, and I can't say enough things about how talented and respected each of those teams are because they are some really amazing and talented players in each and every um, school. All right, so let's talk about your team's sort of performance over the years. Let's start off with your sophomore year where you made your first ever tournament and lost to Queens. Um, even though you lost that game, what did you learn from your first tournament game that you think helped your team in your junior and senior year? Yeah, I mean, I think getting there and being on that stage was definitely a learning experience. Um, it was a pretty close game, and, and eventually Queens ran away with it. Um, but they were super talented, had some really amazing girls on their team. And I think in that specific moment, we learned how to lose and then also take what we learned from that losing experience and then turning it into motivation and trying to use what we learned from those past games in the offseason and into fall ball. So it was definitely a tough loss. And we were all very upset about it because we felt like we had such an amazing team that year. Um, but it just didn't go our way. And they had an amazing team at Queens but definitely learning how to lose gracefully and take that into the next year and use that as motivation and excitement for what could happen next year. So we were very um, sad to lose, but also very excited to get back into the off season and work on what we could do to make sure that we, you know, get further and further each year. And I, th and that's exactly what we did. So. Yeah. Obviously between your sophomore and junior year, your team went from 11 wins to 18 wins. Yes. What would you say is sort of the biggest reason why your team made that jump between those two seasons to lead just the program to sort of take that next step and sort of be that dominant program in the Division II level like you guys have been the past couple of seasons? Yeah, so um, going into my junior year, we actually started out the, the year with a um, program called The Program, and it's pretty much um, a group of ex-Marines that come into your school and they take over for two days and they kind of instill these core values that they learned in the Marines and they transfer it to what your team is like and how you can implement these, what they've learned in their professional career to an athletic career. So my junior year, after having lost, we did this thing called the program, as I just said, and it kind of set the tone for the entire season. Um, it was built on accountability, hard work, sacrifice, grit, and now a bunch of teams on, and prior to us, they, were, they worked with a bunch of teams that had won national championships. And so it was set from the very beginning that they came in and they instilled these values in us. And we were going to try and use these tools that they had given us to, you know, make a run for a national championship. And so specifically my junior year, that's when it all started. And we were, it was just kind of like a flip switch or a switch, flip to switch, I should say where we were all bought in to the team and making sure that the team had everything that we needed to be put together a winning season. And I think we were all trying to work to that ultimate goal of winning a national championship at that point. Nothing else mattered. We really wanted to win at all costs. Um, and so that kind of started, you know, laid the groundwork for that season, that historic season. At that point, that was the most games we had ever won in a season. And it laid the, the tone and the groundwork for, uh, our season this year but for sure that junior year set the tone for everything and it started with that program that really kind of kick-started our championship run this year I would say yeah I've heard about that program before I remember a hockey team did it and they did this one drill I don't know if you guys did where you had to sort of like you're in a pool and you sort of had to trust somebody oh, yeah. and there was this one guy who was like six foot five and like the <laughs> other person was like like six foot something but it was just like super or maybe he was six foot eight and the other guy was like six feet. But like, since he was so much taller, it was like super hard to do some of the trust stuff, but it helped them learn oh, yeah. communication. Uh, who, what was that like for you doing that? Yeah. So we did exactly that. The first day we were called, we had no idea it was happening and it was crazy because prior that prior year. So our sophomore year, the guys, our guys across team had done the program and we had heard about it and we had heard how crazy it was and how influential it was. And that year they went on to win a national championship. So fast forward the next year, we're having a team meeting, not knowing that we we're gonna do this program at all. And they just walk in and our coaches said, here they are, these gentlemen are with the program and they're gonna be taking you through two days of, of pretty intense workouts and drills. And so from that day, it was, I think it was at 2 p.m. 
we immediately got started in doing a workout with these log poles that symbolize a bunch of different things that we use in the season. And um, we were there from two to, I think, like nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. And then we had to previously the next day wake up at 4.30 in the morning to do that pool workout that you just said, which was insane, insanely cool, scary, but fun. Um, as you said, we had to jump in the pool at, in the dark of the morning wearing a full sweatshirt with one of your partners, your teammate, you had to rely on your teammate and you had to dump under the water, put your, take your sweatshirt off, it's drenched in water, hold it over your head and then pass it to your teammate and they would have to do the same thing. And so obviously we had, you know, many um, adults watching out. So we were, we, there was no real danger of drowning or anything, but in the moment it was extremely scary and you had to lean on your teammates. And I'll never forget, I had, my teammate was O'Neill Gallinson who's since graduated, but she and her, her and I were paired up together and we had a crazy experience. We had to trust each other. Um, but I just remember that day was extremely exciting nerve wracking, but we also learned so much from that experience and how to translate that into lacrosse games and how like further in the season, we'd, we'd come back to that moment and be like, we all remember how scary and, and uncomfortable that feeling was and how we have to reach back to that feeling of, you know, uncomfortability and, you know, that feeling of nervousness and take that into lacrosse games. And that was kind of one of the reasons, as I said, why we were so successful that year is because you know, we had that experience, that bonding experience, kind of traumatic bonding experience in the beginning of the season. And then we took it into our season. And that's kind of kind of like the groundwork for the rest of our winning um, mentality. But it was definitely an amazing experience. But we definitely learned a ton about who we were as a team and how to win and how to, you know, use those experiences to our advantage. In that season, you won your first conference championship as well as you guys beat FSC in overtime. Uh, so just talk about what it was like winning your conference for the first time and the emotions you had, especially since, uh, like, what was your reaction, I guess, when Lizzie scored the OT goal? Like, what was going through your mind when that yeah. whole thing took um, place? It was an amazing game. We, at, again, at that point, we were down by, I think it was eight or nine, eight or nine goals at the half. And going into that final two quarters, we were – you know, just saying it all starts with one goal. That's, that's all we need, just one goal. And then we can build on it and build on it and build on it. And one of my best friends and good friends, Riley McGettigan was the tournament at the game and tournament MVP for that um, specific year. And she had just won every single draw starting at the half, won every single ground ball, scored a bunch of goals and kind of kick started that run to come back from eight goals. And then of course, Lizzie putting it in for the overtime goal was absolutely surreal. She was always such a clutch player for University of Tampa and such a calm, poised leader on our team. Um, but that entire game was also so surreal and exciting to experience with my teammates, especially coming down from such a deficit. And then winning in overtime was just the best feeling in the world. And it also was just so, so rewarding to have that experience with my best friends and teammates. So I, yeah, I didn't think anything would top that day. And then fast forward a year later and it's still, it's, I, we can't, I can't even believe we topped that moment. So it was such a great experience. Well, let's talk about the magical season that you just had. So obviously you're a senior this past year. So what type of leadership did you want to bring towards the team? Would you consider yourself sort of a vocal type leader or a lead by example type leader? Yeah. So I would say I'm more of a vocal leader. I love to lead with encouragement, words of encouragement. Um, but one thing that I tried to strive for this year was, um, this was my first year where I really, really contributed goals and points wise to our success of our team. And in years past, I had, was lucky enough to get into a ton of games, um, gain a lot of game experience um, off the bench. But one thing that I wanted to teach my teammates was, you don't have to you know, be the starting girl right out of high school. You don't have to be on the field immediately out of high school coming into college. You can grow your game and grow as a leader and a player and, you know, eventually end up in a position where, you know, you've worked all these years for that that position and where, where you can, you know, put some goals in the back of the net your senior year. And so I hope that what I could take to the team was learning and teaching these girls that you don't have to, you know, be the all-star superstar player immediately out of college. You can grow your game through college and eventually, you know, be in a be in a position to help out your team. And then also that your 
your worth and success as a lacrosse player is not defined by how many goals you put up in a season. You are valuable no matter if you're on the field or on the sideline or if you're injured, whatever it may be. It's, um, you know, it, it can be tough for kids to come out of high school being the, the star of their team and then coming into college and maybe not seeing the minutes that they wanted to see. But that's one thing that I hoped to show my teammates was that, you know, even if you're not going to be, you know, the all-star player out of high school, you can always work hard in the off season, get better. And, you know, maybe you'll see that position change in your career, but no matter what, it's always important to remember that you are a valued member of the team, no matter if you're on the field or off the field. Um, so that's one of my main points that I was trying to instill in my teammates and my friends that, you know, no matter what position you are on the field, you can make an impact. Yeah. I, I, I always think it's interesting when you hear you say that, because when you were talking about the biggest adjustment you had to make to college across, you were saying sort of your footwork and fundamentals and stuff like that. I always feel like the toughest adjustment is to sort of find your role within the team as a freshman, because you don't mm -hmm. want to ruffle any feathers but also the fact that like you were the best player in your high school team. Well, so was every one of your teammates as well. So sort of finding that role is sort of probably the toughest adjustment. I feel like a lot of freshmen have that. I think that maybe when you're in that moment, you don't realize it, but when you look back on it, it's sort of like, Oh yeah, that's probably what it was at least for me and for other people I would imagine. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, Yeah. It was definitely a tough transition for me. I'm extremely competitive and love to physically play lacrosse in games and so, you know, having to work on what I needed to work on and, you know, wait a little bit on the sidelines or whatever position I was in was definitely a learning experience. And I feel like more often than not, that is the case with many athletes, divisions one through three or whatever program they're playing for is learning to adjust to the program that you're in. And I just feel so insanely lucky to be able to grow and learn the past four years under Coach Gallagher and the University of Tampa program and be able to learn as much as I can. And it has taught me more than I could ever imagine about myself, about many things in life, about you know how to handle things when they don't exactly go your way or how you think that they, they're gonna happen. Um, but yeah, it was very um, interesting experience coming out of high school. As you said, most people coming out of high school are the stars of their high school team. And then coming to college, it might not be the case and that's okay. And learning from that experience and trying to grow as much as you can was definitely one of my t big takeaways from my lacrosse career. Yeah, those scout team members, though, they're important. So they have yes, some scout. value. Every every player has a value on the team. 100%, yeah. Our um, scout team this year was like our hugest, one of the biggest reasons why we won the national championship because our scout team was so amazing at replicating what we would see in-game that when we got into the game, we knew exactly what defense they're going to be in, exactly how the goalie was going to play. So shout out to our scout team this year. They were absolutely amazing at helping us prepare for our national championship run. Well, what was your biggest improvement you think you made to your game this past season? Yeah, I, de I definitely think it was just my conditioning, to be very honest. Um, just being able to not have to come off the field for a break was my probably my hugest um, change. And my summer going into my senior year, I had an internship in Clearwater, Florida, and I obviously live in Tampa. So every morning I would wake up and go to the gym before my, um, I had to be at the office at eight. And so I kind of got into a really amazing routine of making sure my conditioning was at, you know, the level it needed to be before I even got to fall ball. Um, so I think that was definitely the biggest, um, one of the biggest changes. And then also just having a different mentality about, I'm here to just play lacrosse and have as much fun as I possibly can and to let go of expectations and just have as much fun as I possibly could have was also a huge change. Yeah. Well, once again, you guys won the SSC championship. Uh, what did this one mean to you though, as a senior? Yeah. I mean, that game was super competitive, super fun to play in. Um, as a senior, it was extremely um, rewarding to end our conference play with a win in a, in a, in a really awesome fashion. And so I was just extremely um, happy and elated to win that game with my friends and my family in the stands. So it was truly amazing. Um, Florida Southern's always an amazing um, team with great girls and really amazing rivalry. So it was really amazing to go out on a win my last game in SSC conference play. So it was absolutely amazing. 
So let's talk about the tournament run that you guys had. So what was your team's mindset heading into the tournament this year compared to other years? Yeah, so this year we were, our main goal was just to win by, if it was one goal or 10 goals, it didn't matter. It was just to win by any means necessary. And we have this saying on our team that hungry dogs run faster. And so that's kind of what we take that kind of dog mentality and doing whatever it takes to win a game into each and every one of our games this tournament. And so our message from our coaching staff was that we don't need to do anything crazy. We don't need to win by 10 or 15 goals. We just need to win by one singular goal. And that's how that's all you need to advance in a tournament, especially like um, our tournament, which was super competitive where no game was guaranteed, uh, get a guaranteed win. And so the message was just to do whatever we can to win and play our game and um, the rest will take care of itself. But just treating it like a game, it was each and every game that we played in the tournament was just that, a game that we needed to win. And we didn't put too much pressure on ourselves and too much stress. We just knew what we had to do and tried to execute to the best of our ability. Now, you guys had an incredible run heading into the national championship game you guys beat two number one ranked teams uh to go on that run so just talk about the run your team had leading up to the championship game and what you will remember most about it yeah um oh my gosh it was such an amazing experience um each of those games were super competitive um there was a lot of nerves i know on my end about just wanting to play the best i could possibly play especially knowing that any one of those could be your last game ever in a University of Tampa uniform and playing lacrosse. And so each one of those games, we just kept getting better and better and our offense and defense were clicking. And it, it just seemed like we hit our stride at the perfect point of our season. And especially, you know, going into those games, we, you know, like I said previously, we were just trying to focus on each game at a time, each play at a time, each quarter at a time, taking it step by step. And I think by taking, you know, you know, the circumstances out of it and just focusing on what we had in front of us, we were able to just kind of hit our stride at the perfect moment. I mean, our defense had been playing amazing the entire season and our offense was just exactly clicking and hitting our stride when we needed to in, in the postseason. So I think we just really clicked at the right moment, had really amazing team chemistry the entire year. And then come, you know, postseason, it just absolutely hit our stride with everything we were doing. And it just turned out to, you know, through hard work to end in our favor. Yeah. I feel like the game against Regis was probably the most exciting <laughs> one just because, like, you guys had the 17-15 to 15 lead. And then they obviously scored to make it 17-16. And it was just the defense that you guys had to sort of hold on to when that game was super fun to watch. I feel like people, everyone likes to see offense. And obviously that was a very offensive game. But I feel like the defense was sort of the biggest story of that game and sort of how you guys managed to hold on to that lead and win. A hundred percent. Yeah, they, our defense was def, has and will continue to be one of our strongest points on our team for years to come and for years prior. Um, our, you know, our goalie, Alex Walling, had been playing amazing. It had played amazing the entire tournament, entire season. And she had an absolutely amazing game. Our defense was absolutely amazing. They are so skilled at what they do and so amazing at just the technique behind everything that they do and what they practice at in practice and in game was exceptional and they had been proven and they have executed the entire season so we couldn't have asked more from them um i was personally standing on the opposite restraining line just like ah like <laughs> nervous so nervous just for the circumstances of the game but in my heart i knew that they were going to get it done and i had the absolute confidence in them to finish out the game but Definitely a nail biter, but like I said previously, all we had to do was win by one goal, and that's all we needed for our team to win, and that's what we did. Now, you guys beat Adelphi College to win the national championship. What emotions were you going through after that win, and have you fully processed it a month later? Yeah, um, that was such an amazing game. Again, um, it was just an unimaginable experience. I couldn't even put into words how much it meant to me to be a part of that team and the win and contribute to that win in, in different ways. Um, yeah, it was, it, the game was held at 12 in the afternoon. So it was very hot. And I think it was a really amazing advantage for us having played in the heat every single day to have a game at that time. So 
it was, um, that was definitely on our side. We had amazing energy in the stands from our parents and fans and amazing energy on our sideline. Our sideline is absolutely amazing throughout the entire season. Um, yeah, I, I don't even think I can really put it into words how much it means to me to be a part of this team and a part of this historic win. Uh, I just feel extremely grateful for my teammates, my coaches, my parents, uh, my siblings, everything. It was just such an amazing experience and I can't even like put into words how much it means to me to be a part of the team because having been on the team for the past, you know, four years, you that's the end goal. That's the, that's the, you know, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow to win a national championship. And then to do that in front of my friends and family and with my best friends and teammates, it was absolutely amazing. And I, I think I'm going to be processing it for a good while until I'm like, until the end of my life. Cause I don't think it's ever going to really set it in, but it's definitely going to be something that I take with me for the rest of my life. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely so insanely grateful and, and just excited to be a part of that team forever and, and instilled in the Tampa um, athletics history. It's just amazing. Yeah. Every time you go back, there'll probably be some sort of photo of you and your team with <laughs> championship trophy which will be in green yes. and then obviously you'll be telling your kids or grandkids about that moment for a long time 100%. as well 100 percent. where is adelphi college is that in like a warm climate i honestly don't know adelphi is in new york so they oh, were definitely yeah okay. they were definitely out of their element a little bit in the heat um so that's probably that's what was one of the key advantages that we had was just being able to you know be very comfortable in the 95 plus heat on that turf and our coach um coach Gallagher always has us every single season practicing from 12 to 2 every single day on our turf at the hottest time of the day and yeah. as much as we may hate it we it, it definitely paid off 100 oh, yeah. percent. Right. it paid off in the end so I'm I'm very grateful for those practice times and those days in the sun yeah absolutely well, were you I will say though was it a little bittersweet that you couldn't do it with your sister to win the national championship. Yeah. So it was, so I had my older sister Cece on the team because she took a fifth year, but I also have an older, older sister Gia who she also played for the university of Tampa for her fifth year, having transferred from a smaller school in North Carolina. So it kind of sucks because I had, you know, that experience with one of my sisters who was on the team, but then my oldest sister who has since graduated from the program wasn't able to experience the win with us. Mm -hmm. um, but she definitely, uh, Gia Colombo, she definitely laid an amazing groundwork for our team. Um, she was also just one of the most athletic people I've ever met in my life. She played amazing in the um, year prior when we won the SSC championship for my first time. So it was bittersweet because I had one sister to cherish that memory with, but not the other, but she was very excited for us. Well, you have to think of she laid the groundwork for the program to be what it is today. So that's sort of the way I would look at it. Like all those players that weren't on the team, they had some sort of role to lead to the championship win. So even though they technically weren't on the field to win, they still won it. But what they did in the years past. For sure. Yeah, that's what we were saying at the end of the game was every single Tampa women's lacrosse player that came before us helped contribute to this win. And I couldn't I couldn't agree more. All right, so let's move on to a segment I like to call the non-lacrosse segment, where I ask Yay. you some non-lacrosse <laughs> questions to get to know you a little bit more off the field. I'll give my answers as well, so it will cool. start a fun conversation. So first one is, if there was a movie made about your life, uh, who would you want to play yourself? Mm. Oh, that's such a tough question. Um, I really love Jennifer Lawrence and Emma Stone. Uh, I don't know if they'd be good at playing my life, but... I think that they're amazing actresses and the, in all of their movies and roles they've been in, they've been amazing. I love Emma Stone and The Help and uh, obviously Jennifer Lawrence and all of the Hunger Games trilogies and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. They're both so amazing. So I don't know, probably one of those two. They're, yeah. they're pretty cool. What about you? Uh, I look nothing like him, but it would be, I just want to brag to people that he played me in a movie and it'll be Ryan Gosling. I just think uh, <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun to say that he played me in a movie. So I'll go with him. Yeah, and he seems like cool. a funny, he seems like a funny guy off the screen as well. So yeah, he seems definitely like a joker. He seems pretty fun. Now, this is a little bit of a lacrosse question, but there was a viral moment with you after the game against Florida <laughs> Southern where a player on that team took the ball out of your stick and threw it on the ground. Now that you've graduated, I just wanted to ask what your thoughts were on that 
moment and sort of the rivalry between you guys because it seems like sometimes there's not a lot of love lost between both of your teams since you play them so much yeah that was definitely a crazy moment um I didn't really think much of it I mean obviously I was a little bit thrown off just in general by what was happening in the time but um I don't I didn't really think about it until after the game and my friends were texting me like oh my god did you see the video did you see the video and I like looked at it and I'm like, oh my God, that's so like, I just thought it was extremely funny. And um, obviously like no bad blood between us now. I mean, in the moment, there's definitely a very, you know, good and healthy rivalry between the two teams. But um, I think that's what just adds to the, the level of play of the game. It makes it fun for both sides. And at the end of the day, it, it's not too big of a deal. And I definitely don't have any bad blood or anything towards that team or the girls, they're both very, you know, great program, great team. Um, and I think that's just what makes it fun to play in, in the conference and in, against them. So it was definitely a very interesting moment that was caught on camera. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm happy that, you know, it, it seems funny now and it seems exciting for people because it went so viral, but definitely no bad blood. And it was a very funny way to kind of remember the, the game in the moment. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no. I can relate to a little bit as the youngest sibling, I did that sometimes. So to my older <laughs> siblings, just doing little stuff like that to get in that head <laughs> yeah. a little bit. So yeah. Now next on the cross question is who has the best style on the U Tampa women's lacrosse Ooh. team? Oh, that's a tough question. Okay, so I have a couple answers. I think one of my good friends and teammate, Allie Peebles, she transferred from UMass and was with the team for the past two years. Um, she has the most insane, just chic, cool girl style. She always has the most pretty clothes on, cute jewelry. She's just exactly kind of like the outfit that I would love to sport. She's so chic and um, always has an upgraded outfit on. And then I would also have to say my also good friend, Riley Miedigan, she always has, I always use her closet for anything and everything that I may need, but definitely Riley McGettigan and Allie Peebles, they both have amazing closets and amazing styles. I don't know who, I obviously can't really answer this question because I'm not on the team. I'll just, I'm looking for the <laughs> roster right now. I'll probably say Georgia Golowacki just because she follows oh, yeah. the draw control pod. So I'll give her the shout out for that one, even though yeah. I really can't answer the question. So no, she is really like her shoe game is on point. She has right. some, she wears like, I think they're, like Jordan cleats they look like like Jordan forces or something like that but they're really stylish and she yeah also definitely glow she, we call her glow um on the team but she has some amazing style as well she's from California so she is definitely oh, like West Coast vibe that's that's good stuff West too. Coast vibe yeah <laughs> she's really really um has a really amazing style as well what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week Ooh. okay well as I said before, I love listening to podcasts and I'm an avid listener of Joe Rogan, JRE podcast. And I just listened to his podcast with a, um, with a quadriplegic who just got the Neuralink, like Elon Musk's Neuralink, which I, from what I can understand was it's something in it. They input a chip in his brain or something like that. And it's supposedly going to eventually maybe give him function back in some sort of way. And I thought that was pretty insane. And I thought that was very innovative and exciting. Um, but yeah, I listened to a lot of Joe Rogan, um, Huberman Labs, a bunch of different podcasts, a bunch of different genres. Um, so I, and that's kind of how I like to like pick up random <laughs> information of what's going on in the world. But yeah, yeah, the, Elon Musk is always doing something crazy. So it's fun to keep up with that. Yeah, no, I've seen some of those cyber trucks he's made out on the street a couple of times yeah. recently. So I there only is. listened to one Joe Rogan episode. It was with Tom DeLonge. And I always okay. knew him as the like lead singer of Blink-22. But he's like a <laughs> UFO expert. I don't know if you knew oh, about yeah. this. And he's like super into it. He left the band to like find aliens. And some of his work uh, was used by the CIA uh, to, to find yeah. UFOs. And I just thought that was really interesting. So definitely interesting guy for sure. Yeah. They, he always... I, it, I listen to it so much because of the people that he has on. I mean, he has some really incredible, like really random people, but really like experts in different fields. And so it's, it's pretty interesting. And it's a lot of comedy, a lot of, you know, sci-fi alien yeah. stuff that I find interesting. So that's pretty cool too. 
Yeah, he would have like a scientist on, a celebrity on, and then like Joey Diaz on. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, Joe, it... yeah, Joey Diaz is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I feel like for me, it will be the Stanley Cup final uh, last night at the time of this recording that happened last night. That was one of the best hockey games I've ever seen. It was so great. Just the end where Edmonton was making that push and you thought they were going to score that goal and McDavid had that wide open net and Forsling basically like dove in front of the crease to sort of block that shot from happening. It was just a great game. And I think the Stanley Cup is the best trophy in all sports. To see it won for the first time for the in Florida Panthers um, franchise history was really cool. Just a great series. Uh, so obviously, hopefully McDavid will get his at some point. I feel like it will happen, <laughs> but really interesting to see that he's now the second skater to win the playoffs MVP and not win a Stanley Cup. So uh, just really good, great game and great series. And just it was super fun to watch. Yeah, totally agree. I, I didn't really get to catch most of the game because I was – I was working, unfortunately, I have a serving job, part-time serving job at the moment. So, but I did see all the videos and it, it seemed like an insane game and the atmosphere in those arenas or rinks, whatever, are absolutely amazing. So it looked like a really fun experience. And then last now on the cross question, what music do you like to listen to and what's the best concert you've ever been to? Oof. Um, so I kind of listen to a little bit of everything. Um, I like country music just for like regular listening. And then I listen to a little bit more like rap and R and B when I'm like not. But my favorite concert that I've ever been to would probably be a Keith Urban concert with my sister CC. Um, we got really amazing seats, and he was just an all around amazing performer. And he's he's so like mobile. He moves around a ton, and he's I don't know. I think he's like I don't know how old he is, but he was so mobile, mobile, and just an amazing singer. Great voice and just great atmosphere in the entire. Um, concerts that was probably my favorite concert but I listen to a little bit of everything I'm really into SZA right now um and just love kind of a little bit of country a little bit of everything kind of yeah the only thing I know about Keith Urban is that he's married to Nicole Kidman that's about it yeah so, <laughs> I would say I listen to everything as well country hip-hop I feel like country is sort of the summer vibe so I've been sort of listening to that yeah. more often like Morgan Wallen and I know Post Malone's sort of becoming more country now so yeah um I would say the best concert I ever went to, uh, probably Billy Joel. That was a lot of fun. Ooh, that sounds a good one. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does a good job live, so that's what I'll go with. Now, cool. one, a couple more questions before we end this interview. I guess the one I want to ask you is, what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective? So I think this year specifically, the amount of green cards in the in in between the thirties were kind of crazy. Um, I totally understand, you know, safety and pushes from behind and in the back and, and stuff like that. And I definitely think it might turn people away just by the amount of like fouls and like stoppages we have because of those green cards. So I'm, and I'm not sure what, what the solution would be because it is definitely a safety thing, but maybe to grow across, maybe just, I don't know, like less, like less stoppages in the game. I think it's most fun when both teams are being physical and getting after it. Um, and then just, I would say trying to get people into lacrosse, even younger, especially in the South, um, in Florida and North Carolina, trying to get like sticks in the hands of little kids as soon as possible and trying to just make it as fun as possible for them and try and like take some of the pressure off of like winning and just trying to have as much fun as possible. But, um, yeah, I would say definitely maybe looking at the green cards. I'm not really sure like how to fix that. And I a hundred percent understand the level of safety that needs to be involved with, you know, pushes in the back and fouls of that sort. But personally, I thought it kind of slowed it down a little bit and it kind of threw, threw our team off a little bit, just trying mm -hmm. to adapt to that so suddenly. But um, yeah, I'd say those two things, getting kids into lacrosse sooner, especially in like my state of North Carolina, and then also just maybe addressing green cards a little bit, but I'm not sure how we, how they would do that, but those yeah. two definitely. The green card issue is definitely weird because we all talk about trying to like a lot of coaches talk about like we want the game to not take three hours, but then there's yeah. still a rule that makes the game take longer. So I don't get that's sort of the part as a fan that I don't yeah. get. But I think it's another thing I don't like is I feel like sometimes refs are either way too whistle heavy where like they call so many and then mm -hmm. like the game. I just think it sometimes gives teams an advantage that way. Or sometimes they don't blow the whistle at all, and then it becomes like out of hand. I feel like we saw some yeah. of that sometimes, and I feel 100%. like it was hard to find like a middle ground. So that's sort of the thing I hope they could figure out for next season is how do you find that middle ground of not blowing the whistle too much, 
and but also not like not letting everything go where it becomes like a complete yeah. like chaotic scene out there yeah definitely saw that a lot this season it was either it, it felt personally like it was either one or the other where it was just super you know whistle happy or just like people were just getting super aggressive um so I would love to see some of that kind of balance out and try and find more of like an objective you know way to make these calls where it doesn't slow down the game but also keeps everybody safe yeah exactly well Gracie do you have any shouts you want to give to any of your family members <laughs> teammates and friends and who should we yeah, have on I the do. podcast next yeah, so um, I think you should talk to one of my high school teammates. She was a year below me, Megan Klingenberg. She played at Latin and now plays defense at Denver. And she is insane, insanely good at her job. She's an amazing uh, defender. So I want to shout her out because, one, she's one of my favorite lacrosse players to watch. And, two, I think she'd be fun to have on the pod. But then also, just randomly, I want to shout out my sister, Cece Gia, my younger brother, AJ, he plays a football at Western Carolina University. He's an absolute animal and beast. And then my mom and dad, obviously, and then all my friends, uh, Sarah, Suze, Caitlin, Riley, Alyssa, Kayla, Flo, Sophie, uh, Katie, all of my friends. I want to say hi. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you so much, Gracie, for taking time here today and coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're a great player even better person so i just want to let you know that and obviously congratulations on the national championship way best best way to end off a career in my opinion 100 percent. thank you so much for having me i really appreciate your time and having me on